Hello and welcome to the video. My name is Ray Whitby and I'm your host. In this video, we're going to be looking at a segmented double helix, an extension to a previous project. But this time we're going to use two tones of wood, oak and mahogany. Now the first step with the helical vase, or vase as you wish, is to cut all the segments at a particular angle. This one's going to be 14.4 degrees, which will give us 12.5 segments per helical layer. Then for the top and the bottom surface of each of those wedges, they need to be cut at a precise angle that varies between the front and the back of the piece, starting at 3 degrees at the front and ending up at 5.2 degrees at the back. That's about 30 mil for the depth of each segment. There are a lot of segments to process in this project. 144 pieces, I think, which is a world record given that I think I'm the only person actually trying to attempt helical segmented turning at this time. We have to get two segmented rings as templates, which are featured in the previous video as to how to do them. There's a link to that video in the top right hand corner and also in the description below. It'd be vitally important to have both of these when doing any kind of helical project. To the segments, I take six pairs and glue them together and these will form the anchor points for constructing each helical layer. As in the previous project, going to the last two full segments and finding their midpoints and that will be the location of the anchor wedges. Now I'm going to be using 15 minutes epoxy glue on this project, seeing as I had a lot left over from the previous one. Waste not, want not. The positioning of the anchor points has to be precise, otherwise the seamlessness of the helical layer just won't happen. And we use the rod in the center just as a guiding template to make sure the spacings of the anchor point and all other wedges in the helical layer are accurate and evenly spaced out. Of course, in woodworking, once you've put the anchor in or a marker in, it's always best to do a dry fit after you cut all the pieces before you do your final glue up, just to make sure that this helical layer is as seamless as it can be on the upper surface. There are 24 segments to each helical layer in this particular project and I went for putting the oak and the mahogany piece together as a pair, glued those in before moving on to the next one. The problem wasn't so much the order in which I was assembling the wedges, I think it could have been better affected by using a 30 minute epoxy, I think the whole assembly time for a single helical layer was probably about 12 to 14 minutes so the first pieces laid down were getting very tacky and difficult to move. Once all the pieces up to the anchor point are in place then you can wrap around as many elastic bands as possible and also decided to put in little wooden spacers just trying to get the pressure on the midpoint of each wedge going around that helical layer. Then putting on a paper spacer and then the top template ring goes on. And then clamping down just to provide some axial pressure to keep all the pieces in place and glued as tightly as possible to each other. And if all has gone well, after the paper has been taken off, yes, there's a little bit of mess which can be cleaned up with a bit of sandpaper. The best way is to use a couple of extra wedges that have that helical, varying helical angle from 3 to 5.2 degrees, glued them together with a bit of sandpaper and then try to use that to smooth out any inconsistencies on the top surface before going again. And once ready, then we can get on with the next layer and it's just a simple repetition as with the previous helical layers. Start off with the anchor point, then get your pieces glued in, and then get them clamped down. 
and always try to use the central column as best as possible. Again, just for guidance, if you looked at the previous video, you'll probably notice that it may be a little bit more like the Leaning Tower Pizza. Preparation work is absolutely critical before going on to the next helical layer. Any inconsistencies or blemishes in the underlying layer will just get exacerbated when building up the next subsequent layers. I also tried to lay down all the oak pieces, then the mahogany pieces on top of that to see if that would speed things up. Unfortunately, it was still taking just as long, 12 to 14 minutes. And as I say, get the 30 minute epoxy would have saved a lot of headaches. Now we're on to the final layer. And again, as before, just using lots and lots of clamps to make sure everything's glued as tightly as possible. And then we can get it onto the lathe. Now, a number of viewers, and thank you for those comments, have suggested that they would prefer to see a flat top rather than having the extended helix in free space. So that's what I've tried to do in this one. Once on the lathe, just to get the whole shape down into a, a cylinder first, and then work on the base of the project. The rotation of the helical pattern began to play tricks on the eyes. Definitely had to take a few breaks with this one. Even though the last pieces of the helix are coming onto the tool with the rotation direction, it's just a case of turning very carefully like you would any kind of open segmented structure. Once we're happy that the base is flat, we can then get a slab of mahogany on. Now I missed a trick here where I should have possibly turned the inside at the base before putting the slab of mahogany on. It would have saved a lot of hassle seeing as the vase, the vase, it's going to have a flat bottom anyway. Well, once back on the lathe, we try and get that mahogany base flat with the rest of the cylinder. And then I've attached off camera a tenon, reverse the whole thing, and now we can take off the other sacrificial end. Had I actually used mahogany in the sacrificial template ring rather than sapili, I probably wouldn't have had to lose as much off this part as I did. Not sure if I'm ever going to get a project where the sum total of minor mistakes would actually be zero but it's a learning process. And trust me, I have a lot to learn when it comes to woodworking and wood turning. I'm very, very aware of that. As you can see that the interface between the oak and the mahogany sections are not straight lines. So I couldn't just leave it as it is and decided that I'd put on a slab of oak and turn that into a rim. So tell me below whether that was a good idea, was it a bad idea? What could I have done differently to make it even more aesthetically pleasing. But once dried in place, we then just take the oak rim down to the level of the cylinder, hollow it out, and then go for shaping the inside of the vase. And at this point, I think you can see that the project has now become a very hypnotic device. You will like this project. Now, all kidding aside, whether you like it or you don't like it, um, please do comment. And if you're not liking the project, rather than just give me a thumbs down, why not leave a comment with some constructive criticism? At least I can respond to that and try to better myself and better the projects in future. A 
I've shaped the inside of the vase and now it's time to do the outside. Now I've gone for one particular shape. I was trying to find something that would be aesthetically pleasing and in line for demonstrating the double helix of the project. Now, whether this is the most optimal shape for that, I don't know, but please let me know. What do you think? What kind of shape should I have gone for? We're into the finishing stages where I've done the usual sanding from 120 up to 240. I've used sanding sealer, then gone back on with 240, going up and then using the Yorkshire grit, both the standard and the micro form. Once the outside and inside are complete, it's time to reverse the vase into the remounting jaws and deal with the base. Try and get that slightly concave and then go through the same process of sanding and polishing. Now the project's complete. All that hard work I hope has paid off. Some of the static photographs perhaps don't lend it justice for the double helix nature. And I think this is going to be a piece that you have to have in constant motion, constantly turning. Up close you can see a few misalignments of the wedges, but between the inside and the outside there's no gaps that I could see. The piece is almost seamless. Thank you for watching. I hope you do like it. So please click on the thumbs up, click on subscribe and the bell notification, and please do comment below. Let me know what you think. Thank you once again for your time, and I hope I catch you next time. Take care.